Sarah Hollick. Um, she's an award-winning artist and she owns her own company called Soul Art Studio, which is a business that helps guide people and connect with their spirit um, to create a life and businesses that express it. So Laura developed Soul Art, which I mentioned, also the new icon program, and Follow Your Heart to Make Money, which is something we're going to, I hope, talk a lot about here today. Um, I know all of those, they're unique, they're creative courses, programs, they, they allow for deep healing, uh, to create things in your life, so I love you, and I've discovered your work so many years ago, and what I really like about you, Laura, is that you, um, you teach people that their creative source, or excuse me, their creative self can be a source of their wealth, um, mm -hmm. and that's the reason I really wanted you, because people think they have to shut down their creative self. Um, and I say, embrace it. Totally. Actually, that in itself, I think, is the turning point of where we are in business today and in the world, where we're actually recognizing that who we are and our creativity is one of our greatest assets to creating wealth. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I talk with a lot of people who are in creative fields, like actors and musicians and writers and or even people who are secretly actors and, and musicians and writers. And they feel like, how do I make it in that kind of world? How do, I mean, th th there's always this undercurrent of there's not enough to go around. I'm always in competition with the other people around me for attention, for jobs, for, you know, studio space. And yet you've built your whole life as an artist. What do you have to say? How did you figure that out, that there was wealth here? How did you find that? Well, there's a couple pieces to this, and we can go through this almost like we're going on a journey together to really tap into our own wealth. So, of course, we want to look at mindset. And you mentioned things about the lack idea. So when we have that, it's going to be really hard to have abundance reflecting externally when we internally feel lack. So that's one way to just start to look at this. Like, what do we believe? What do we think is possible? And then really, as we start moving along this journey, we at some point make a decision that we want to have a life that reflects creativity or we want a life that reflects who we are. And then we have to start to let ourselves lean into that and see what it's like. Like, what does it look like? What does it feel like? And get almost an imaginary vision of what that can look like. And then when we have that vision, it can become like a guiding star for us when we're making decisions. There's a funny thing that happens as soon as we get like a, a vision, an imaginary idea of what we want. That's actually the easy part. And it's the fun part. We can do our vision boards. We can do the stuff. We get that vision. We can go inside, close our eyes, see it. And then we open our eyes and it doesn't reflect what we want. And so we're hit with that contrast of what we want and then the reality reflecting the opposite. And this is really when the real work begins of following your heart to make money is that you're, you're lining up your inner ideas, your inner vision to the outer world. And that's decision every day, making different decisions that allow that to reflect. So eventually what you imagine is your reality. So those are like, that's the journey. We can go into different parts of it, but that's basically what it is, is allowing us ourselves to have our imagination lead and then take the journey to unify the vision with reality. So that's a great question right there for people. How do you, and for you to answer for us, how do you trust your imagination? How do you trust the intuition? I mean, that's really where the merge comes in. People say, oh, I'm going to do it. But I can't, well, that's going to be wrong or I'm not going to, that's not going to, you know, they just, they can't, what's the leap? I mean, did you make that leap? Was there a point in your life when you said, I'm going to do this or I'm yeah. not? What happened? Yeah. Well, I make that leap every day. I try to make that leap every day because it's not like you do it once and you're done. It happens every single day with little things and little things turn into big things. So, for example, the other day, I had this sense of like, oh, I have to drive down this street and, oh, I need to go to this store. And it made no sense, but I just went with it. And when I got there, I ended up running into one of my very dear friends who had been away for over a month and they happened to be in this store that I was guided to go to. Now, it's little things like, okay, go down this street, do this, go here, call this person. When we start taking those little steps, our spirit trusts us. 
and it'll give us bigger things to do. And we also, our muscle for trust expands. And so we can handle bigger leaps. And there definitely were points in my life when I made huge leaps, huge decisions that scared me at the time, but I, I felt them. I could feel them. So the more that we honor the little things, the more clear the bigger things become. Yeah. Was there ever a point where you were, dare I say, working for someone else? And yeah. you said, that's it. It's, it's my vision, my way or the highway. <laughs> Well, yep. Yeah. Well, so my story of how I got to here. So right now, I mean, I'm in the studio. I have a thriving business, but this isn't how it always was. Okay. Definitely. There's been a journey. So when I first was, you know, growing up, I always knew I was creative. I loved art. I loved dancing. I loved music. I just loved all the creative arts. And I just thought I'll go and do that. And I went to university for fine art. I performed professionally as a musician and a dancer. And I was doing all the things that I was guided to do. So that I, I was doing that. But I had no idea how to make money. And it was stressing me out because I would do things. I'd have an exhibition. Everybody loved it. But then I wouldn't be paid for it. And so there was, there was definitely a disconnect between money and what my offer, my gifts were. And so I would go for these walks every day. And I would just be like praying for some kind of intuitive guidance, something to tell me what to do. And one day I got this message to walk it out. And so I was walking. So I felt like I was on track. And then I thought, you know what, I could get paid to walk. And I applied for a job at Canada Post. And I got this job to be a letter carrier. And when I got the job, I wrote a contract between me and the creator, the universe. And I said, okay, I will walk 10,000 kilometers. And when I do, I complete that, I want to know how to make money being myself. So I got this job and I basically created a container of space for myself to work it out, to give that myself the freedom. And so I was doing this job that had really nothing to do with my gifts and talents, but it actually was like my vision quest to discover how I could make money being myself. And I ended up walking for over five years and I did my 10,000 kilometers. And when I completed it, I moved into this studio where I am now, which was over eight years ago. And during that five year walking vision quest, I had to clear a lot of limiting beliefs. I had to learn to develop my trust in, my, in myself and to be able to take action on the things that I felt where there was no proof. And I had to build that muscle. And once I had built that up for, to a certain degree, I was ready to leave. I was ready to say, you know what? I have enough of my own sense of what I want now that I'm going to trust that. And I'm going to let it show me the way, even though I can't see it exactly, I'm going to let it show me. And so that was really the huge leap. I left that job. I had no safety net. I was living by myself. I, and I just, I developed my intuition. I developed my ability to hear what was going to be the best thing for me and to take the chance of acting on it, to develop that courage to act on what you feel. And that is huge. Did yeah. you find that as you started doing that, you started getting increasing validation from source, universe, you know, whatever you call it, that you were right or on the right track? Or were you still having, mm -hmm. like, being kind of nudged in a certain direction? Well, I definitely was getting sort of signs and clues and validation that I was on the right track because I knew, I just felt it. Like, I just knew. At the same time, there were a lot of challenges because I had to set a new course. And when we are creators, there's no one telling us that it's okay. And often we will be reflected back that it's not okay. And to me, those are those moments when we, we strengthen that muscle. And it's the muscle that all entrepreneurs have to work on all the time. But strengthening the muscle of trust in yourself, trust in your intuition, belief, and the courage to act on something when there's no tangible proof. And to, to know what it feels like to believe in yourself. And those are muscles that, to this day, Every day I look for an opportunity to work on those muscles.
because they're essential on the path of following your heart and making money. They're essential on the entrepreneur's path, essential in our economy when a lot of structures are crumbling. Well, what do we have to look to other than our intuition? Yeah. <laughs> and so, so you mentioned um, following your heart to make money. And I know that's one of your programs um, that is so you know, perfect for our audience right now because a lot of people who are watching, they're either in a job and they want to get out of it, they want to completely change careers, or they ha they already have an idea for something that they want to do, they don't know how to do it, or they're just kind of in that la-la in the middle place, like, I don't know what's next, all I know is it's not this. <laughs> so <laughs> right. what, what do you do? How do you, how do you work with people in that, in that well, way? Yeah, so the Follow Your Heart and Make Money program, I use the metaphor of a tree. And if we think about a tree, it has like, it's got an essence in its seed. There's something in the seed that kind of knows what it wants to become. And then that seed is planted in the right environment, roots grow, and then this tree can start to, you know, like shoot up through the ground and blossom and flower. And it's got fruits to share and create a harvest. So when we're following our heart and making money or following our heart to make money, we are, we're like that tree. First, we have to understand the essence in the seed, what wants to grow. And I call that the iconic essence, or I call it the heart leader, the creative spirit. There's like an essence inside of each person. And it usually, it can come as like an archetypal energy. It can come as just like a feeling of what brings you joy, but that's in the core of that seed. Once you connect with it, then you plant that seed. You make the decision, I want to grow this. And then you start to do the things that nourish the roots. And it's a lot of underground work initially, just like the tree. A lot happens underground. Nobody will see it. Nobody will know. There actually will not be money initially because this root system needs to be set up. Once the root system is strong and it supports the essence, it can then grow. And when it grows, this is when you can start to make money. But you want to have that solid root system so that the money is sustainable. And so when I'm working with people who want to follow their heart and make money, we do a lot of inner work. We really refine their own essence. And then we cultivate the root system necessary to sustain and build and grow that essence. And then when that's solid, then we look at, okay, how do you want to express this in the world and setting up the structures and the systems to connect it so that you can have a harvest? And the thing I love about the tree metaphor is that you're never giving away your tree. You give away the fruits, and this is where money circulation happens, the fruits and the blossoms from the tree, so the tree is never depleted. The tree is always growing bigger and stronger, and the fruits, like it wants to relieve those fruits, it wants to give them, and the, the tree is then more empowered. So that's, I love looking at it in that metaphor, and that's a great way to start. And people can look at, you know, where are they in that? Are they clarifying their essence? Are they planting the seed? Are they developing roots? Or are they ready to connect it with people, ready to make offers? And you start to identify the stage that you're at in your journey, and you can give that stage your full loving attention. I love that because, you know, I'm thinking, you're right. So I'm this tree, and I know what a lot of people's fears are that, you know, they'll grow and they'll develop, and the tree will never fruit. The money will never be there. It, it, but what you're describing is no it's you got to trust it's a natural process it will bloom it will fruit it just happens when these other stages have been kind of developed or addressed or completed so you don't Absolutely. have to worry about that now the money will be yeah. there when you're you, fully expressing something like that totally. When, the, when we have fears that the tree won't flower or won't bear fruits or won't be able to generate money, then we actually haven't done enough inner work because that means that either the soil needs more fertilizer, the environment needs to be richer, we need to compost our old belief systems to make the fertile soil, we need more of a root system because the tree, the essence, it will want to grow. It is meant to grow, but we do have to take care of it so that it can grow. So if there's a feeling of, oh my gosh, will this thing bear fruit? Then I would say that that the stage to focus on is really tending to the essence and tending to the roots so that the, because the root system is the believing that it can support and sustain and thrive and grow. So some inner work, you know, when I was on my five year walking vision quest, Deliver that, the mail. 
I mean, but still I in communication. Roots. I was composting a lot of old belief systems. And still to this day, I still continue to do that. But, you know, it is a journey. And we are in this transition point in society where there is an kind of like an old belief system and a new potential belief system. The old belief system says you have to do it a certain way in order to be successful. But it doesn't work anymore. So we're creating a new way of doing things. And so we have to shed the expectations, the shoulds, the, the, the guilt of how we're supposed to be in order to allow ourselves the freedom to become who we can be. So just to shift gears for a little bit, um, when, um, when you're working with somebody and you're trying to figure out what's growing inside of them, what kind, let's say this way, what kind of tree are you going to be? <laughs> you know, I might be a palm tree or something. Um, because not everyone feels like they're creative, but you probably know that there's some sort of creativity in everybody. Like I'm assuming that what you do isn't just for creative types. It's for anybody who wants to grow something or make something. How do you figure that out? How do you help someone know what they're meant to be doing? Like coaches ask me all the time, I want to coach, but I don't know what I want to coach. <laughs> like you obviously figured out what you can coach be through doing it because it's you. It's your kind of tree. Do you see what I'm getting at? I understand. So basically, if somebody has this idea that they want to create their own life and they want to make money and they want to be an entrepreneur, they are a creator because they want to create something. So really everyone is creative. It's just the way we understand the word creativity. So often people associate creativity to mean that you're gonna paint or you're gonna you know, be in some studio like how I am, but that isn't necessarily true. Creativity is the desire to turn something into reality, to have an idea and to wanna to birth that. Creativity is approaching something with your own unique energy and infusing that into it. So there, there's many ways creativity can be expressed. But when someone is at the point where they're not sure of how they uniquely want to express themselves and be in this world, if it's coaching or art or whatever it is, then there is a journey to discover who you are, to actually recognize that as one of the most valuable things that you can do is to take the time to discover yourself. When I'm working with people, often we'll start with soul art. And it doesn't mean they have to be skilled in art, but because it can be very basic, but we start with these very creative spiritual practices to be able to hear your own true voice, to discover what kind of a tree you are, to discover what kind of um, you know, way you want to be in this world, what kind of style do you have? All of those things are part of your own unique essence. And so I always start with people to make sure that is clear. Because if that's clear, this tree will want to grow. It's undeniable. And if it's feeling like nothing's happening, probably the essence hasn't been clarified. And that in itself is, oh, it's just such sacred work to get to know who you are. I mean, like that, you know, in the future, I actually think schools for children, that's what school will be. Discover who you are. And then the adult life is contribute who you are. Oh, I love that. And all the school teachers right now are saying, yes, Laura, you're my <laughs> woman. <laughs> no, I, I abs okay, so speaking of who you are, exploring who you are, I took one of the quizzes that you have um, on your website. By the way, her website, um, can I give out, let's see, Soul Art Studio, would that be the best one? Yeah. Okay, yeah, soulartstudio.com, and it should be up there on your screen as well. Um, I took a quiz that says, what kind of creative spirit am I? <laughs> and I got spirit leader. Yeah, so, and that's so you. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So I'm, I'm just going to validate. I think your quizzes are pretty good. And I think you have another one as well for people that they could, they could take that sort of uh, you'll give I to do. us, just to us. Well, you know, what I'll do is I'll include both for, for everyone who's watching this right now. So there's the what kind of creative spirit are you? And what's great about that is that it helps to clarify your essence. So you discover who you are. And then that's like the beginning of creating your life and thriving because you'll know who you are. But then another quiz that I have is what is your money type? And this is where you start to clarify the unique ways that you are here to be with money. 
So I'll include both of those quizzes and they'll help to discover yourself and help to carve out the path of how you want to follow your heart and make money. Right. And that's it. Following your heart and making money. Money comes on the heels of your heart or when the tree is grown and flourishing and strong. Yep. Actually, I want to add too that 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 in itself can make people feel like, oh my gosh, well, when is this tree ever going to grow? Just even a little sprout is a can have a flower. So money starts to circulate very early, but the tree can keep growing and growing and growing and get more and more abundant. But there can be those sprouts that money can begin. I mean, once the inner work is is set up, the roots are there, you can sprout and money is is there. So it isn't something that doesn't have to take years and years and years. Um, but it's like, it's a, it's a journey. I think that's the thing that I want to share is really to give yourself permission to luxuriate in your own journey, because there's wealth in the journey that starts to carve the unique way that you will flower. Yeah. And Laura, okay, I, I was going to end it here, but I have one last question for you. Okay. Because you keep saying things that make me go, oh, oh, yes, yes. I, okay. <laughs> it sounds to me like you recognize that money is, is kind of an energy and it's like creativity in a way. Do you see that there is much distinction between the two? Because so many people think money and wealth is an object. And if I do this, then I get that. But I have a feeling that you're kind of like me and no, the lines are, are sort of blurred. You know, it's. You tell me. For sure. Well, I think of money kind of like a river, a river channels. And it's this currency that's moving. And so in our society, you know, these, this money is circulating and flowing. Well, within our body, we have blood that is circulating and flowing. And so it starts in the heart and it moves. So when I think about money in society, I'm actually thinking about how is my love my unique gift, how is it circulating through society, the blood of society? Because right now we do have a money society. I don't even believe that that will always be the case, but I believe it's in place right now. And so right now I feel like what's happening or what's being asked of us is how can we circulate our love through society? And then that moves through the money channels. So to me, money is like a river. It's like a flow. We do need to enter it and tap into it to be part of the currency and part of the circulation. But it's essentially something that's always moving. It's always moving and flowing and circulating. Just like creativity, creative flow, yeah. money flow, similar. Yeah. Oh, I Laura, it. I love your work <laughs> and I love the way that you think. I mean, I, I hope I hope everyone watching does as much as me because it's so, I mean, it's so in alignment with what I do and it just, but you have this whole other magnificent way that you teach and share and, you know, bring things out in people that I'm sure people are always telling you, I can't believe what you found in me, <laughs> right? Oh. <laughs> okay, so um, for everyone watching, be sure to visit Laura's website. She's at soulartstudio.com and go get the What's Your Money Type quiz, right? And also the other one, um, which one is that? What kind of creative spirit am I, right? Yes. All right, Laura, thank you so much for being thank with us you. today. Loved having you. Mwah. Thanks, Summer. Bye. Bye.